What is up guys and welcome to the Beyond Sanasi and my name is Shings and today we are playing a 2v2 match on the beautiful map Anorian in battle for middle of 1 on the patch 2.22 everybody is picking random and we will get to play the Gondor faction this time Gondor and Mordor combination Dor, Mordor, Gondor <laughs> There was like a meme in our discord and by the way you should also be joining our discord which you can find the link for in the description down below There are over 8000 BFME players and you can join us to play some games in multiplayer scene by using the game range application. Okay, it's a double evil faction from the opening team and that's a good situation for us. Gondor is one of my most favorite factions in the game and I believe the main reason for that is actually Gandalf. I mean, Gondor without Gandalf is going to be kind of pointless, but of course, that's not the only strength from the Gondor faction. You have also crazy economy. Remember, Gondor has nine spots inside the castle, but other factions like Rohan and uh, Rohan is seven, and Mordor and Isengard is only eight. So you have always at least one more spot inside the castle, in compared to your opponent. Okay, so double Isengard. Okay, that's easy for us, though. I, I don't think that's gonna be winnable for them. <laughs> we shall see. I mean, if we don't get defeated, if Mordor, my ally, doesn't get taken out from the game at the beginning of the game, this should not be a hard matchup. Because again, I keep seeing it every single time, the combination of two separate factions is just much, much better. The only good thing for the Isengard faction though, is they can shut down Mordor completely later on. With double freezing rain, which means Mordor will have no leadership whatsoever for the entire game. Okay, this mid is gonna be taken down, hopefully my ally is gonna give me eye. And this way, I can get more experience. So, I will give you additional combat experience, which means you can level up your units faster. And if you get any of the soldiers to level 2 at the beginning of the game, it's just too good, you know what I'm saying. Okay, they use the war chant. I need one more farm inside the castle. I want to go for the stable also, um, very early. I'm going to demolish this, actually, and buy this. This way, I don't need to delay my stable. Remember, when you play with a Mordor ally, and you are playing Gondor or Rohan, you want to give him actually additional settlement, because Mordor is getting so much value from those three Lamemirs. And he will grow rich. Okay, use Warchant. That means we cannot fight this, or we cannot win this fight anymore. But we have another, pass, uh, another soldier coming, and this soldier is very close to be level 2. And if we can get him somehow level 2, that's going to be quite nice. So we have still two settlements outside. Because we were able to take one of the opening settlements too. That's very good. And I think this settlement from our ally is going to be protected. Just kill the workers. Try to get level 2 boys. Nice. We got level 2. But he has still Warchan. I think Warchan is still able to beat the level 2 soldier battalion. Warchan is just too good. You know. That's also one of the reasons why Isengard is only one starting unit. Because Warchan is so good. And especially on the Uruks, because they are so fast, you cannot disengage from them. Running away from the Uruks is not an option. They will always be able to chase and catch you. But it's okay, you know. We are able to stall the time. And very soon, we will have the Gondonites upon the field. And then we can destroy those Lamrimers anyway. Nice, ooh. Nice, ooh. Nice, ooh. My ally is recovering his Lamrimers. And even though his eco is not looking that great as we are talking, but trust me, that one... It's going to be changed very soon. And very soon this Mordor will have unstoppable amount of economy. And he will be able to recruit Nazgûls, Witch King, Trolls, Drama Trolls, Catapults, Numa Kills, whatever he wants. Rally together, knights. Okay, nice. We can also creep offensively. This Isengard is actually going for Lords. Um, when you see many, many furnaces inside the castle of somebody, then you know what he's up to. It's like an experience kind of thing, right? Because I eventually played like thousands of games on this map in my life. And uh, I'm still not done with it, guys. I'm still into the BFME hype. I think that's one of the best RTS games in the world. And unfortunately, there is no company behind this. So we won't let this game down. We need to build more furnaces, uh, more blacksmiths, I mean, sorry. And uh, why you ask, King? I mean, the question is, if you are wondering, why we do build blacksmiths and not farms? Remember, the Gondor faction is the only faction that has no armory. I mean, Mordor has no armory, but generally no armory. And your blacksmith is basically your armory at the same time. And if you have only one blacksmith, your upgrades will be hella expensive. And that's why you need to build at bare minimum six, 
to get the full value of the steel bonus, to make your upgrades a bit cheaper. That's the reason. Okay, he's trying to creep this, but I think I can stop him from creeping and get the money for myself. I have also the power points for the heal if I want to. We have now full base, that's very good. And very soon we can go for the gun right number 3, which will get the stable to level 2, and then we can buy the shields. And the shields are essential to make the Gondonites more tanky against arrows. That also includes the arrows from Lourdes, by the way. So even Lourdes will be dealing way less damage to our units. But that's not the main reason, of course. Our main reason is to get more armor versus the seeds. Sentry Towers. This way we can stay in the base from the enemy faction, even after him actually... Oh, the troll! Don't chase me, please. Don't chase me. Don't chase me. Don't... Dude, sometimes those Gondor Knights, they need like one hour to turn around, you know what I'm saying? And that's horrible. Now I need to bring them to the base of my ally. <laughs> this troll will not, will not stop chasing you down, by the way. There is no way. He will never stop chasing you down. I mean, now he will stop because he was running into the orcs. <laughs> that's good. He will never... Oh, the Warc Riders. Okay, I see you. We cannot fight them as we are talking. That's not possible because they have whole ability plus war chance. But... The thing is, the war riders are like an early mid game unit. In late game, they will get outskilled. My ally was just buying the middle camp. That's good. Now he can build additional orc pits. Let's creep this one too. Lure him away with one of the Gondonites. Use the second Gondonite to creep the lair. Easy peasy. Then we squeezy. Press on. Let's go together. Regroup behind the walls. Hold them here. Draw back. Okay, that's good. Um, nice, so we have three Gondor Knights. We are getting so much money and value from this. That's very good. We have the shields now. We cannot fight this really. I mean, his whole ability, which gives him additional damage and armor leadership. Okay, so now it's time to rush. We need also blades. Um, the combination you are looking for is blades and then shields. This way you have DPS and also tankiness. Because without blades, it will take you some time to destroy any of the structures, you know what I'm saying? So blades and shields. And then heavy armor last. And you are looking for a beast rush. There is loads actually in front of my gates, gate. <laughs> and I cannot really fight him because he has carnage. So I will ignore him for now. I will just try to, you know, let him do whatever he wants. Let's use the heal. My ally is also buffing us with Eye of Sauron. Giving us additional damage and combat experience. Knights of Minas Tirith. Men of Gondor. Come on, men. We have them. Attack. Okay, keep rushing all the time. I mean, this Isengard is actually not paying attention to... Uh, he's paying attention to his piece. But I'm also paying attention to my Rohirrim. He has nothing. I mean, they need pikemen at this point of the game. They need pikemen or this game is going to be very tough for them. Because I will be able to keep rushing them all the time. And the war riders, they cannot stop me. The second I have my heavy armor purchased... They cannot even fight me anymore. Because remember the shields, they don't only give you armor versus the arrows, but also versus enemy cavalry. So you will be able to win the cavalry versus cavalry situation. You can fight this, no problem. They are on the Alvin Wood. I'm actually pretty tempted to kill this guy, but I don't know if, he can, if I can kill Lords. What I need to do is actually beat him to use the Carnage. Then peel back and wait for the Carnage to go on cooldown, and then I can eventually engage on him. But there is like a stupid mechanic in this game, which is a part of the game unfortunately, and that's like move stop, move stop, move stop, which will give eventually Lourdes the chance to get away, you know? I'm gonna, I'm gonna force a fight very soon. Hold on a second, I can fight this. I'm gonna heal up a bit. Oh, he missed the cripple. But he has still the carnage, so we need to be kinda still careful, I don't wanna lose any of my, any of my Gondor Knights. The thing is, as we have now the Forge Blades and the, and the Shields and Heavy Armor is coming in also, the units are so expensive. Okay, use Carnage, it's good. We can now heal up and then chase him down all the time. And keep rushing all the time. Okay, now the Lords might be in trouble. He's paying attention to his main castle and he cannot pay attention to Lords and the main castle at the same time. And then, even if he can save the Lords, we can still deal a lot of damage to his economy. But the Wards are coming from his ally. We save today. We can step on the, on the thing that landed from our ally, by the way. We have additional armor on them. And also, on top of that, which is the main strength of the land abilities in the game, is that the enemy losing all their leadership bonuses. Can I kill this Lord somehow? Oh, 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 Lord is dead. Lord is no more. Nice, ooh, guys. Nice, ooh. 
<laughs> he's mad. Oh, he's mad, dude. Okay, the thing is that my ally and this guy were actually italic to each other. And when this happens, sometimes your PC screen is popping up. You know what I'm saying? And he's mad now. He's molding now. Okay. <laughs> he's angry. Oh, trample. Nice. Level 6 on the night. I like this a lot. Uh, our heal is still on cooldown, but it's going to be up very, very soon. I can even go for a... For a... They are underestimating my rush. I'm telling you guys. They are underestimating my rush. They have zero pikemen. Let's use heal to get up. Boom. Keep rushing all the time. We have now the Eye of Sauron. Keep doing it. Keep doing it all the time. There's also uh, Saruman upon the field. And the thing is, Saruman can't be everywhere. So we need to use the mobility advantage. You know what I'm saying? Keep making more Gondor Knights because he has zero pikemen. And then we will get like six Gondor Knights upon the field and keep rushing both the beasts at the same time, boys. He cannot fight this. If highly leveled Gondor Knights, if level 8, 9 Gondor Knights, level 8, very, very strong, level 4, the Fireball. Okay, I can keep rushing with this. I don't want to lose my level 8 though. It's very important. Now, I'm, I'm going to summon also the Rohirrim very soon. That's normally something I don't do. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, he cancelled it. That was really close. He actually, he was all about to kill my Gondor Knights. Uh, he has no Pikemen. Dude, I can keep going. I can keep going. Kill the Furnace. Killing the Furnaces early on is very good. Because that's going to delay them to be level 2. And later on to be level 3. Which will make them extremely tanky. And also level 3 buildings from evil factions. Every single one of them is going to act like a tower. Let's go ham boys. My ally is actually was thinking that I was not paying attention to my Gondor Knight. But I do pay attention to my Gondor Knight. Okay. If he can kill this Uruk. That's going to be nice. That's going to slow him down. And he won't be able to recruit any more pikemen. I mean, the Uruk pit is still not level 2, but again, us destroying that, uh, destroying this Uruk pit <laughs> means that the Uruk pit is not gonna hit level 2 anytime soon. And that we can spam more and more Gondor Knights all the time in the rush all the time. Come on. All I want you to do is kill the Uruk pit. That's all you gotta do. And then we need to heal up a bit, and then we go again for a rush. Dude, they underestimated my, my rush potential, guys. They were hoping that. Uh, Saruman and a couple of war riders can actually be enough to defend, but hell no. Hell no. Not against my Gondor Knights. More, 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 more. Together, Knights, come. So, Knights. I mean, my ally actually doesn't need to play the game at this point. All you gotta do is give me, like, Eye of Sauron, and that's it. You know what I'm saying? But here's a Nazgul now. That's gonna mean... I, I don't think that's gonna be winnable now at this point for the for the opening team. I don't think they can win this at all. Like, how can they win this now at this point? And we have also... This is Witch King, by the way. We have even more leadership now. The trolls are going to war. We can now easily destroy the full castle. We have the Witch King leadership, which means 50% more damage in armor for the, Ro for the Gondor Knights too. And we are rushing both the base at the same time. I hope you guys enjoy this interaction. What can, what can happen if you get a leap with the Gondor faction? You can spam Gondor Knights and keep rushing them. And this is not only winning us the game, but also buying so much additional time for our ally. Our ally's economy is untouched. The only time he lost stuff was at the beginning of the game. He used the war time defensively. He stole the trolls from my ally. He's saying, man, he's angry, dude. DC man you again. He's angry, dude. Not playing with that guy. <laughs> I mean, come on now. The DC screen is popping off maybe once every four or five minutes. I know it's, it can be annoying, but... Oh, GG's gonna be cold, guys. GG's. And I hope you enjoyed this one. It was a, you know, like a short game, I think. Uh, but it was fun for me to play, dude. And hopefully it was fun for you to watch as well, guys. Look, Saruman. Saruman, you cannot get away from me. Necromancer has been defeated. GG well played. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this in the future. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourselves. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, guys.